gentlemen welcome back to the pesky poll podcast my name is robert this is ari and we have a very special sunday episode for you guys usually we don't record on sundays but we had the great honor of interviewing louisville graduate drafted in the sixth round by the chicago white Sox. he's a top 50 prospect in their organization right now starting pitcher cade mcclure he was really nice to us. Seems like a really cool guy. We're recording this six, five hours before we have to interview him. We don't know if Ari's going to be there or not yet. But I got, I got some uh, extra, not extracurricular, but got some family business stuff that's got to go down. So Yeah, so Man. we'll see if you can make it, but we hope yeah. you guys do enjoy. With that yeah. being said, make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We will see you guys in the interview. All right, guys. So with me today, we have Louisville graduate drafted in the sixth round by the Chicago White Sox, Cade McClure. Cade, how are you doing today? Good, man. How are you? Thanks for having me on. I'm not doing too bad. Once again, we really appreciate you swinging by and talking with just me. Ari had some family issues he had to deal with, so he couldn't be on. But let's just, get, let's just get right into it. So first question I want to ask you is when did you know that pitcher was going to be your primary position? Um, I mean, I would say probably like later in the middle school phase, early high school. I mean, um, you know, I was a lot bigger than a lot of kids my age and just had a pretty strong arm. So, um, you know, pitching was something that I felt like I was pretty, um, you know, pretty, pretty good at and, um, you know, kind of excelled further than I did, you know, with the bat. So um, kind of once that was, uh, you know, something I saw for maybe for the future, I really just tried to run with it. Mm hmm. Yeah, because for the people who don't know, you're six foot seven, so I would have assumed someone your height would have been more interested in playing something like basketball. Something like yeah, that. I mean, I love actually, I love playing basketball. I played basketball through high school as well, but um, baseball ended up being the uh, you know probably the best path. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you're growing up through middle school, high school, when you started to become a pitcher, who was more of your idol player growing up? Um, you know, being from Cleveland, I love watching a lot of. Um, Cleveland Indians guys. I grew up love watching CC Sabathia, um, guys like that. And then you know, um, in the later years, it was um, guys like Bauer and um, Kluber and stuff like you know, guys that really were uh, you know helping those Indians teams take some postseason runs and even to the World Series. All right, yeah, I'm kind of the same way with the Red Sox, but right now there ain't too much to cheer for. So yeah. we've celebrated their first win in ten games finally. Yeah, every every organization goes through it at some point, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't for a while, but, you yeah. know. All right, so as your shirt says, you went to Louisville. Kind of, can you describe your college recruiting process and how you chose to go to Louisville? Yeah, so uh, I was able to, um, you know, play in some in showcases and some bigger tournaments where there was some exposure with um, other college coaches and pro scouts and stuff like that, so kind of following those tournaments and those outings, I would get stuff in the mail or calls or emails from coaches or, um, you know, scouts just kind of, you know, getting some information, getting you know, invites to camps and doing stuff like that. And eventually I went and took some visits to some of the places I thought I was more interested in and ended up falling in love with Louisville and, um, you know, ended up, you know, deciding that was the place I wanted to be at. All right. So I went up and looked some stats on you and I saw it in your sophomore season. You were basically – unhittable you know, 12 and 0 record i saw it what was it 2.5 era you were really in command of the strike zone, not giving up a ton of walks did something change from your freshman to sophomore year and how you looked at the game was it just more getting used to the competition do you have like any answer for that how that spike happened uh, yeah you know i think it was a combination of a few things i think it was um just changing work ethic a little bit getting 
more serious with the weight room, getting more serious with understanding the game. And then I had, you know, an unbelievable cast of teammates surrounding me that, um, you know, it made my job a lot easier than it had to be. So I think there was just a combination of things like that and just understanding the game more, um, you know, seeing a year of, of college baseball, understanding, um, you know, what it was really like and then um, getting my feet wet that first year. And then that second year coming back with a full head of steam ready to roll. All right. So I'm a senior in college. Ari is a junior in college. So we wanted to ask, what was your favorite college moment? It could be either on the field or off the field. Um, I would, you know, I would probably say the biggest moment was the, uh, the super regional win dog piling on our field against Kentucky to go to the college world series. Um, we had been so close the first two years before losing on go ahead home runs and walk off home runs and just crazy things like that, that, um, mm -hmm. it, it's tough for those seasons to end without that trip to Omaha. So, um, you know, that last year with, you know, the, the rivalry and all that stuff in place, it just made it that much sweeter. All right. So after three years of being at Louisville and basically dominating college ball, you were drafted in the sixth round by the Chicago White Sox. Can you kind of describe draft day for you? Were you nervous? Were you excited? Were you confident? Yeah, I mean, um, I had just come off of a kind of a bad outing, honestly, um, in our regional, and I was just kind of bummed with um, how that was going on, and I just really needed to bounce back, and that coming week was our Kentucky Super Regional and came out, and I threw super well, and I really thought that, um, you know, there was going to be a team out there that may have pulled the trigger earlier than they did, um, but, you know, things happen for whatever reason, and um, that didn't happen, you know, sooner than I thought, but um, we were just in practice. I mean, we had just advanced to the, the Omaha round of things. So we were practicing team practice on the field draft was going on. And um, I had other teammates getting the call during that, during that day as well. So that was really cool to be able to share those moments together with everyone. Nice. And it's really convenient that you happen to play in the, well, the same city's organization as one of your childhood friends, Mr. Trubisky. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of nice. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> And he just got drafted um, about two months prior to that, a month prior to that. So it was uh, it was cool to kind of see that kind of fall into place and, um, you know, hopefully be able to share that city together someday. Yeah. OK, so where is. OK, so in 2018, I had saw that you had an injury to your knee. I the article I read didn't go into full detail on how the injury happened, but it said you dislocated your knee and tore some ligaments. First of all, I can't even imagine going through that injury. That that sounds brutal. But what was the rehab process like, and how did you get back into, you know, slowly getting back into that grind of pitching every day? Yeah, um, you know, I just slipped on the mound um, going to field a ball. Uh, kneecap could just fell a pop. Uh, yeah, man, it was rough. But, uh, you know, the doctors with the White Sox and my, th and my therapist and stuff back home were able to um, help me get back on the road and uh, – you know, it was it was a long like eight or nine months of um, pretty frequent therapy, pretty much daily, five, six days a week. And um, just trying to stay positive and, and watching baseball, knowing that I wasn't able, able to be a part of it was really tough. Um, kind of like this year as well, you know, with those games going on and we're not playing. So, um, you know, I've been through it before. It makes it a little bit easier, I guess, this time around. But, um, yeah, the rehab was about eight to nine months and then um, just kind of eased me back into getting off the mound and stuff like that and took it easy with innings limits and all those kind of things to kind of take precautionary measures to make sure that, um, you know, it's truly healthy. All right. Yeah. I can understand that. Cause you see all these guys going down with year long injuries, like for example, Chris sale going down to Tommy John this year, right. all these guys going down, you don't as just a regular fan like myself, you don't see the rehab process and the struggle it is. So I can only imagine how much grind and how hard that was for yeah. players like you to have to go through that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, it, it's something that, you know, hopefully, you know, you don't ever have to go through and you've seen teammates go through it. So when it's actually you, it's um, it's tough at first because there's nothing you can really do about it. And then, uh, you know, you hear the stories about what it's like to have to go through rehab. And, you know, like I said, you just hope it's never you. But when that moment comes, man, it's it's tough. Mm -hmm. And how long did you say you were out for again? Um, so I, I got hurt in May of 18. And then I didn't, I didn't come back until spring training of next year, roughly. So pretty much about um, about eight to ten months, somewhere in that range. Mm -hmm. And 
it sucks for you because now this year, because of everything, we can't play again. So how are you keeping in shape throughout this year? Yeah, man, I was just talking about it someone earlier. I mean, um, played the half season after the draft, missed almost all of 18 with surgery, played last year, and then missing all of 19. So I've had, you know, like literally one full season in three possible years. So that's been that's been rough. But, um, you know, I've, I've been able to continue to work out. The place that I was able to work out here in Pittsburgh has remained open. And, um, you know, a lot of the local pro guys and college guys that were in the area, we were able to meet up and do some live BPs and do stuff like that to kind of keep it as – um, you know, baseball like as possible, but uh, a lot of the pro guys, the big league guys ended up leaving for, you know, camps and, and, and their season. So it's kind of died down a little bit, but, uh, you know, I've been able to keep working out and throwing and just keeping up with everything, hoping that, uh, you know, the White Sox give me a call sometime in the next couple of weeks, maybe. All right. So what player in the MLB do you look at right now and you say, that's who I want to be in 50 years, whether it be kind of like the way you pitch or their award history or how they're playing right now up to you. Um, yeah, you know, man, I don't know. I mean, I don't really pay attention too much to a lot of that stuff. I mean, to be honest with you, growing up, I was just so, so into basketball and football. Baseball is kind of like the afterthought for me. So I didn't really watch a whole lot, um, or like know tons about the game, but, um, you know, I'm just trying to be myself, man. I just go out there and, and pave my own way and not trying to emulate anyone really too much, trying to do my own thing, be myself. And, um, you know, there's a lot of guys who uh, played a lot of years um, in the pros or in the big leagues. And, um, you know, they're never really compared to someone specifically, you know, they kind of, they kind of pave their own path and that's kind of what I would hope to do. All right. So you don't want to necessarily be like anyone else. You just want to be the first Caden McClure. Yeah, man, absolutely. All right. I respect that. That's, that's nice. So, as of right now, from what I've read, you are part of the top 50 prospects in the White Sox organization. From what I've read, you've been called up spring training to travel with the team, and you're on track to become a major leaguer within the next two to three years, one to two years from what I've read. Do you feel any pressure on yourself having to live up to those, those expectations? Do you put any pressure on yourself? No? No, man. I'm, I'm, I'm more excited than anything. I mean... Um... You know, pressure is something that you kind of you put on yourself. I mean, if you have been in moments where you don't let it get too big and you're able to kind of calm yourself within those moments and, and just think about the basics, hey, it's baseball, hey, it's whatever, you know, if you can kind of dumb down the moments and just, you know, be yourself and do what you've always done that, um, you know, if you don't let the, if you don't let the moment get to you, the pressure won't be as big. So that's, that's just trying to keep my head down, keep working and, uh, you know, let the, let the pieces fall where they may. All right. Going off of that, I kind of want to ask. Is there any like games, either college or professional, that you can think of that was like kind of like that, an extremely clutch situation where there's a lot of pressure on you, but you had to like take the pressure out? Yeah, I mean, I would probably just say that back to that super regional game. I mean, um, you know, we have two in state rivals and we're the host team. And um, my coach called me into the office on like a Wednesday and said, Hey, you're starting on Friday instead of our number one. He just wanted to get me out in front and then have our number one come on, on, on the next day to close it out, win in two games and be done with it. So, um, you know, he had confidence to toss me the ball and let me run out there. And, um, you know, I threw pretty well. I mean, there was, a, I think it was like five or six shutout innings. And uh, it was just a big moment to put my team in a position to, you know, advance. Like I said, the years in the past where we got sent home early. And, um, you know, I just wanted to be able to put my teammates in the best position to win, man. And, um, same thing, you know, you just got to block out that, that crowd noise. You got to block out that crowd. You just got to have that laser focus to where it's just, Hey, I'm, I'm throwing a bullpen and there just happens to be a guy in the box and, uh, just, you know, let the defense make the plays. Don't try to be too perfect. All right. That's actually really cool to hear that. You just like calm it down. You don't hear that from too many guys. A lot of guys more love the pressure than anything. So that's really interesting to hear. Yeah. All man. right. If you weren't playing, I want to get to know more of the Caden McClure person than the Caden McClure, yeah, messed up my words right now, Caden McClure <laughs> baseball player. So if you weren't playing baseball, what would you be doing right now? Man, I'd like to think I'd be playing football or basketball or something, man. It's, uh, you know, sports run deep in my blood and in through my family. So growing up, um, you know, having a dad who played in the NFL and a mom who was a college volleyball mm -hmm. player, um, college sports you know, were like ingrained in me that, you know, I was going to play in college, but I didn't understand it, you know, when I was little, that it's a process to get there. It doesn't just happen because you want it to happen. And, um, you know, I just, 
always assumed I would be in those oppor- an opportunity. Um, you know, luckily I was, but, um, you know, I, I like to say I'd be around in a different sport or something because, man, I don't know what I would do without having the op- opportunity to go work out and, and stay in shape and compete against other people. All right. So um, what's been your favorite ballpark to play in? Either minors, college? Um, you know, we had some cool ACC opportunities to play in some of those big stadiums in front of good crowds on, you know, Friday, mm-hmm. Saturday nights in Clemson and Florida State. Um, you know, some of those places are really cool. But, I mean, I think ultimately it was pitching, you know, in front of 20,000 people against Florida in the College World Series. That was, that was probably the coolest opportunity that I've had. Man, I wish I got to go see that stadium. Stadium yeah. Florida looks gorgeous. Yeah, it's it's a cool spot. I mean, good crowd, great atmosphere the whole week, you know, kind of leading up to it. Um, the fan fest, all that stuff, man, they make it as, as, as like the World Series as, as they could. And it's, um, you know, it's obviously an opportunity that I had that's super blessed, but I'll never forget it, man. All right. So I want to kind of get your opinion on something that happened in the MLB recently. Um, so Fernando Tatis Jr., his team was up huge. I think score was seven to nothing, and on a three zero count, hit a grand slam. Rangers were not too happy with it. What are your thoughts on if you get a guy, if you're down three zero to somebody in the batter's box, and they're up big and they go swinging for the yard? You know what, man? Hey, it's uh, you know I'm I'm more of the new school of stuff and the old school unwritten rules, man. I I don't care for them a whole lot. I mean, honestly, if you think about it, um, if those three guys got him somehow. Um, the guy, it got to, it got to three Oh, because the pitcher fell behind and, um, you know, it, it's, it's, comp- it's a competition. It's, it's sport, you know, there shouldn't be a rollover. I mean, how many times have you seen teams come back from five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10, you know, run deficits to come back and win. So I, I don't, I don't exactly. know how, how, how you can fault someone for, um, wanting to give your team more of an advantage. And, um, yeah, I don't, I don't care for that a whole lot. I think that's, I think that's kind of BS that they're, they're fighting people over that, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, my. I would say even as a pitcher, I'd say, well, don't don't load the bases and don't get the three zero. You know, what I mean, who's to say he doesn't take on that pitch and the next pitch hit the home run? I mean, how different? What's the difference between a three one and a three zero? You know, it's four runs. Yeah, it's true. Mhm. I I completely get that, and Ari and I thought the exact same way. Like these new guys that are coming in, Tatis, um, who am I forgetting? I can't remember some of the other guys. I'm completely blanking right now, but. Some of these new guys that are coming in, changing the game, you know, giving that sort of new style, new swagger to the game. Right. Like, we're not going to have them stop being themselves and giving that right. high energy every right. point. And you're right. Like, teams come back from 8 nothing down all the time. Blue Jays did it just a couple weeks ago. Right. So, all right. Without being biased, the winner of the 2020 World Series will be. And. I mean, right now the Yankees are looking really good. Um, Don't say that. Sorry that you're the Sox. That man. hurts. <laughs> you know, you know, maybe the Dodgers will kind of break through finally and get that get that win they've been looking for. Kershaw get that get those wins he's been looking for. But um, you know, I got a few teammates that have kind of been um, in, in the big leagues this year too. So it's cool to see those guys play and have a chance to you know ultimately go for that. So I'm pulling for someone. Um, you know, any any teammate, former teammate of mine that's that's got a chance to make it. All right. So I only got one more question for you. Um, once again, really awesome to have you on. This last question we've asked everyone that we've interviewed to kind of get their perspective on it. So let's say you have that high school player right now that's trying to make it to college ball, or that college player from a lower school that's still trying to make it in the draft. Considering you've been that guy there before, making that grind and pushing your way through, what advice do you have for those guys? Hey, I, I would probably just say don't don't read too much into what everyone else has to say. Um, you know, there's a lot of lists and rankings and and reports on certain players from people who, um, you know, maybe never even played at that level or maybe you know have an opinion that you know isn't necessarily the the popular opinion. But um, you know, just I would just say work, man. It's just Put, put the uh, put the work in your body, you know, do your weight training, do your conditioning, eat right, um, you know, just take care of yourself. And, and then you're going to set yourself up ultimately to be in a good position when you step on the mound or, um, you know, step into the box or whatever it is. So I would just say, you know, like I said, um, you know, work hard, take care of your body and 
um, you know, let kind of let it happen. Don't, you can't really force a lot of that stuff. And, you know, I, we were always told in college, control what you can control, you know, control yourself, control your body, um, you know, and then let the, you know, kind of the baseball gods, if you will, um, you know, kind of take, take the road. All right. Um, what was I going to say? For those of you, for those who don't like know how much of a grind you put in throughout like high school and college, how many days a week and like how many hours a day were you sitting there either training in the weight room, stuff like that? Yeah. I mean, uh, playing three sports in high school, I didn't do a ton of extra like conditioning and, and lifting and stuff like that just because I was practicing every single day for something. So, um, you know, it was more so when I got to college that I got comfortable being in a weight room and comfortable with really starting to work hard and understand that, um, it doesn't just happen. You know, you have to put the work in, you have to put those t- that time in to ultimately have your you know dream come true, hopefully. And, um, you know, I, I would say now I work out, you know, probably six days a week and, um, you know, just push my body to my absolute limit, set those, you know, set those goals on my Apple watch and make sure I beat them every day just to, you know, just keep myself in check and just prove to myself that, Hey, I, you know, I earned it today. You know, I didn't, I didn't let the day kind of go to waste. All right. So, with that being said, I got no more questions for you. Huge, huge thank you once again to you. For anybody that wants to follow Cade, I will put his Instagram down below. You got anything to say to the people? Hey, guys, just uh, keep taking care of yourselves during all this kind of craziness. And, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, once everything gets back to normal, we can get out there and watch some watch baseball in person. I really hope so, man. I'm missing it. But. We hope we get to see you with the White Sox sometime very soon. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it.